Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this Warcraft from World Dungeon Guide, I'm going to take a look at Dire Maul on a Horde week, and I'm going to showcase three different strategies, one for each Horde leader. You could also mix and match these strategies a little bit. But let's take a look, Red Difficulty Dungeons, all Horde leaders, three different strategies. Let's go. The first was Stomper Creek. Creek's Truce will brawl against friend or foe at 70% health. Actually, it's at below 70% health. So, for example, if you hit them with an Execute and it's up to three levels lower than a Krieg, then those minis are just going to instantly start fighting against each other. If it's four levels lower, then you need a little bit of a notch to make them fight. You can also use stuff like well bags or Safe Pilots. Anything that damages the minis a little bit and then they start fighting against each other and then more come into fray. And if you can make them fight around their own towers, they will also attack their own towers. And if you can make them fight around the boss, they will also attack the boss. So the key mechanic in this one is just to make the enemy minis fight against each other. First, you have to make them fight against each other over here when you need to defend. But as you start moving up the map, you want to make them fight against each other at the towers and then at the boss. And that's how you win. Then the second boss, Imoltar. Imoltar has a couple of mechanics that you need to be aware of. First is it breathes void energy in a forward arc, so it's a really high elemental damage arc attack. So you want a resist tank, so either you use something like a quill board to turn it around, and you could also use fire elemental, something that would resist is really good here. And another thing is that these eyes, Eye of the Void, detonates when near an enemy, damaging everything nearby. Beware playing units attract small. So whenever you play a unit, an eye is soon going to spawn in that location. That means that, for example, when you use your Cobalt Miner, you want to mine, for example, here, then you want to place the Cobalt Miner close to the base because an eye is soon going to spawn. And if it spawns so far away from the base that the base can't shoot the eye, then the eye is going to follow the miner and kill your miner, so you won't get to mine. So place your miners close enough to your base so that the base can handle the eyes as your miner moves towards the veins. You can also make bombs out of this because you can drop your own minis in defense and then eyes are going to spawn and then eyes are going to start exploding. And you can make those eyes explode also for defensive purposes and you can also make eyes explode at Imoltar so that those eye explosions are going to hurt Imoltar a lot. Another thing to keep in mind in this one is Imoltar has Banshees. And so if you use some kind of fire elemental strategies, be wary that those don't get mind controlled. So you can turn Imoltar around, you can go in with Fire Elemental. One strategy is also to distract and attack towards this tower while sending a Plague Farmer, because Plague Farmer outranges Imoltar, Imoltar won't aggro it, so Plague Farmer can actually solo Imoltar while you keep Imoltar busy on the other side of the map. So a couple of different ways to handle this one. And finally, the third was King Gordok. King Gordok has greater fury, which means King Gordok is just going to hit faster and faster and faster. And King Gordok also has a pocket healer. So healing, fast hitting, that's a bit of a challenge. However, there are two lieutenants here. There's Letendris over here, and then there is Chromecrush over here that you can get on your side by hitting them because they all swap allegiance at 10% health. So this one can slow down King, and this one limits the healing. Now, which means that Left Hendris is the important one. You want to grab this one. So you want to get this tower at the start, then you want to grab this one. And with this one, you can slow down the boss so that the boss becomes manageable. And then you try to kill the healer from behind the boss as you attack the boss from the right. You can also take Chrome Crush optionally and get another assault coming in from the left. But just getting the one that slows down the boss is the main thing. That's really important, because otherwise the boss is just hitting too hard. So let's take a look at the Horde armies that I use for Dire Maul. So first here is one for Gromash. I really, really like executing Dire Maul because it makes those minis attack against each other in the first map. And then in the last map you can use that for healer, you can use that for those lieutenants because they're regular minis, they take regular execute damage. Execute works really well up to minus 3 levels compared to a dungeon, so a level 20 Execute can do a level 23 dungeon really well. Level 24 is still possible, but it's a lot more difficult already. And another Horde Mini that I do like in this one is the Stonehoof Torrin, because there's Huntresses and there's Ogre Mages all over the place, so Stonehoof Torrin an excellent answer to those. Plague Farmer is wonderful mini in many places in this one because it hits the towers, it can hit bosses, just doing phenomenal things, especially with that ranged talent. And then on the second boss, this one is using now the cheat that Harpies. So I have Quillbore to turn the second boss around, and then I send Harpies, and I have Execute. Execute also gives them Bloodlust, and I have Cheat that to keep them alive. So just a wonderful combination that can handle the second boss. And in the third boss, you can also use 
billboard to turn the lieutenant around and then take it down with harpies and go from there. Just a really, really beautiful combination. Another fun alternative is the one I use with Cairn. Not all horde leaders can do this because horde leaders typically cannot buff good tanks. But Cairn can buff elemental, so Cairn can buff fire elemental. So fire elemental together with Frostwolf Shaman to give it armored. And that's just a wonderful combination. Also using Execute here. Well, it is horde week, so I love to use Execute. And I have some harpies and quillbores and lake farmers here as well. So pretty much all of the wing conditions packed into one in this one. However, even if you don't have Execute, do not despair. There are other means to get through the first boss. In this one, I'm using Sneed, I'm using Safe Pilot, and I'm using Wellpex. Although I would really love to use Execute here this more like just to demonstrate that, okay, if you don't have Execute, don't worry, you can still handle it. Then on this one, I'm also not using Harpies, even though I do love that Quilbo Harpies in this one, but also showing that you can do it with Plague Farmer with that range. So taking the other approach in the second boss when you're distracting on the right side and then the plague farmer is just killing the boss from the left side. Stonehoof Torrent, wonderful against all of those ogre mages and huntresses. Troll is, is a fine horde mini when I don't want to use execute and that's how we roll with this one. And then I'm going to show you all these three very different strategies in action. Alright, here we go. Dire Maul, Horde Week, Gromash Army going with the cheat death harpies and here just using that execute at the start getting things to fight against each other then we can start to work on trying to get access towards this tower and stonehoof torrent just doing a spectacular job there did you see how it took out the mountaineer so oh, just a just a wonderful mini for these purposes and here we go we managed to grab the chest there and plague farmer with that range meaning that it's out of reach of the tower it's just, it's brilliant. And now we can do a little bit of execution near the tower. So now everyone is totally crazy and they're all shooting at each other. And then I'm weaving in this Plague Farmer. While, while the Ogre Mage is focused on the tower, then Plague Farmer just sneakily comes in, grabs the tower for me and kills the Ogre Mage. While my base is able to tank one Ogre Mage on the other side. All right, so one base taken one base left and then of course the big boss in the end but here we go here we go again stonehoof torrent just working we're putting in the work and look at that mountaineer is still again it's just all of that charging it's just wonderful all right and now i'm planning to do some execution here we go and now everyone is totally crazy again everyone is hitting everything and sneakily my plague farmer is approaching and coming in. I don't think it's actually going to be able to get everything done right here. There is quite a big army coming on the other side, but I should be fine, I believe. We're sending out some harpies and cycling towards an execute and execute on the army on the right. Yep, that army goes down. Taking out the ogre mage while it's trying to kill a tower. Tower is mine. It's just beautiful. If they kill the tower on their own, the tower does come back under the opponent's control. But it's still gonna be fine because they keep focusing on it again and again. And yeah. So now both towers have been taken. I'm actually going to lose the tower, but only momentarily. Lake Farmer doing a beautiful job. Just that poison, letting that poison simmer. It's great. And there, an execute close to the boss so we got an ogre mage to duel a boss that's wonderful as well so life is life is good everything's going really well here all right we have the towers now we're starting to look quite stable there's no no meaningful assault coming from any direction so let's get to work on killing the boss Lake Farmer with range can be awkward with the chest, by the way. If there's someone close to the chest, then they actually get the coins because Plague Farmer is so far away that it doesn't count. But now we can send out some harpies, plus we do the execution. And we have minis coming in from all sides and boss is just down. Boom. Then the second boss, Imoltar. Here we go, trying to get the attack in with the harpies while defending. That's actually, I'm. That wasn't a very great move for me because now the banshee is going to grab my 
crap my torn. No, it didn't. Torn was just in time. Oh, never mind. That that was an act of sheer brilliance, obviously, because the Torin can kill the Banshee with a charge. So there we go. There we go. Banshee went down. Torin also took took out the Hunters with the charge. Torin, absolute MVP, doing just a spectacular job here. But I haven't been able to get the real assault in yet. I want to get some of those cheated harpies out there. Now there's another. Another Banshee coming. This time I'm confidently sending the Tauren out there. And boom. Banshee goes down. Tauren is fine. Alright, this time... I actually don't have the tools because I don't have the Quillbore yet. I'm trying to do a bit of cheat thing here so that the Banshees will be able to take, take out the Ogre Mage. But then, in addition to the Ogre Mage, there was also a Huntress. Okay, two threats against the Banshee. That was a bit too much. So... That assault failed, but it's okay, there's still plenty of time left, and my base is even healthier than the opponent's base so far, so everything's looking pretty good. Alright, the fight continues, I'm getting ready to send another wave of harpies, trying to defend a little bit. That defense wasn't super successful, I think I may have to have to add a bit more. No, and then there's a then there's Huntress. Trying to find the opening where you can send your harpies through can sometimes be a little tricky. And sometimes you send them through the far left, sometimes you also weave them in through the middle. Here I have not paid sufficient attention to the way my opponent is playing their minis, because they have to cycle through their deck. If they just play the Huntress, they can't play Huntress again. And it's the Huntress and the Ogre Mage that are potentially dangerous. So, here we go this time. This time there was a... Banshee, but it didn't get to do much. So now we're in time. Now we can turn that boss around. We can get an execute in with bloodlust on the harpies, and I have enough time to cheat death. Look at that. That cheat death ensuring the victory, because otherwise the harpies would have died to either of those threats. But cheat death is really the key to making the harpy strategy extremely consistent. And then King Gordok. King Gordok is fairly simple. So first I want to use just enough resources that I can get that center tower and then I start to work on getting the rightmost lieutenant. So here I'm using Grom, Stone Hoof, a little bit of plague farming. I know that I can also send a farmer out there because there's always code ready. And now Harp is coming in and properly timed Quillbor turns the boss around so Harp is get to go in and do their thing. I also want to send some tanks on that side because those tanks are very useful in keeping the boss alive because the AI is also going to send a bunch of minis typically down this right side path and then if they get the boss down to 10% again then it's going to change sides and I don't want that to happen. I'm trying to send a little bit of reinforcements out there at just the right moment and I'm also trying to grab this side just thinking whether I would execute there or not deciding not to. So here, as you can see, the tanks are re being really useful because they're protecting the miniboss so that the min I won't lose that, end up losing the miniboss. Oh, that ogre mage timing though. That was tough. Well, I'm doing a little bit of executing here. Trying to drop some unbounds and the stone hoof torrents as well on the healer. And yeah, healer is taking a bunch of damage. Also remembering to mine just in case that something happens and I I need that I need those resources then getting some mining in. Now the boss is now well now this is over. The healer is down, boss is poisoned and boom, it goes down. Then it's time to do the same with Cairn. This time I'm going in with Armored Fire Elementals. Obviously, if I had the Lifesteal Relic, then Fire Elemental would be totally bonkers here. Because then it doesn't even need armor, it just survives and beats up everything. But because in this one I don't have the Lifesteal Relic, but Fire Elemental can still be very, very powerful. I didn't manage to find my Fire Elementals here at the start. So they have to take a little bit of a more cautious approach. But now I'm saving up some gold, getting ready to get the Fire Elemental out there, together with the Shaman to support it. Alright, Fire Elemental is now armored, Shaman is healing it from behind, Fire Elemental is, even without the armor, of course, wonderful against the Ogre Mages. 
I was just tanking that Ogre Mage with ease. And here we go. Fire Elemental, getting some healing support. And things are looking pretty sweet. Oh, that, that was a little bit awkward. I need to lose some... I need to lose some... Harpies there and also missed with the execute. I should have executed also the Huntress. But the lone Huntress doesn't deal that much damage, so I'm still going to be just fine here. No worries whatsoever. And now I have one Fire Elemental going on there with some support from a Shaman. And I'm sending another one down the second path. And between these two Fire Elementals, we should be totally fine. Parliamental closing in on the Huntress, taking it down. Yeah, things look fine. I'm picking up the chest. I'm going to mine. And <laughs> the battle rages on environmental did eventually die on that side. But I can execute the grunts, so I can make the grunts fight against the boss. While I have a Plague Farmer in the background, and I'm sending Fire Elementals in, and I'm sending Harpies in, and yeah, this is so, so over. Yep, the boss is, boss is not looking too good. Also, getting ready to do some executes once something interesting spawns, but the boss just goes down already. And then it's time to send Fire Elementals against the Moltar. Fire Elemental is a wonderful tank against the Moltar. The Moltar deals elemental damage. The only thing you have to be mindful is don't let them be stolen by Banshee. Because if you let them be stolen by Banshee, yeah, then that's gonna hurt. It's actually still manageable. You can kill off the Fire Elementals potentially, and you can also... You can also, if you have like Lifesteal Fire Elemental, then you can actually just send another Lifesteal Fire Elemental and they're just going to duel it out for all of eternity, pretty much. And then you try to send another one another way. <laughs> so you can recover from some Banshee steals, but it's still better to not let them steal with Banshee. So you can drop a Quillbore, so that Quillbore gets stolen instead, or you can try to drop some harpies, but that would need to be dropped in advance, so the harpies will overtake the fire elemental and then then they will be stolen. There are some ways to handle it. Well, here I'm just basically feeding harpies. Harpies to these banshees. I also don't want the banshee to hit my base, because banshee, that tick, is actually going to deal a ton of damage to the base. But now banshees are gone, and I happen to have a couple of plague farmers here with a couple of fire elementals, and the boss is just going down. Boom. So only in Gordok left for Cairn. Let's try to get just enough troops here to take that center tower. Mm, bit of an awkward selection of troops. I can't find my fire elementals. But I guess this will do. Yeah, I think those who care and Plague Farmer will, but that should be enough. I, I believe that's enough. So I can just send the fire elemental out there against the boss. I believe. I'm still watching the situation a little bit, but between the Cairn and the Plague Farm, that should be okay. All right, now we have an armored Fire Elemental. Fire Elemental is going to take a long time to kill the boss, because that mini boss is also going to slow down your minis. Which means that, yeah, it really takes a while. It really takes a while for that slowed down mini to kill it. However, I do have an Execute handy. So I can just drop an Execute here. And that's going to deal half of boss's health, or close to it anyway, depending, of course, on the levels. And from there we should be fine. Now, getting ready to take that miniboss. That miniboss should be able to just kill a Huntress. A Fire Elemental protecting the, protecting the slowing boss. And could have possibly sent this Fire Elemental also through the... Through the right path. Maybe that would have made more sense. Now now the boss is a little bit in a central position. And also the boss, when it's not slowed here, yeah, it's not going to <laughs> it's not going to respect the fire elemental either. I need to get the boss more towards the right. Probably need to drop a quill bore soon to get the boss more towards the right. Sending those harpies out there, trying to get them closer to the leader, also to the healer. And hmm. Well, the boss is slowed down, but I would need to—I would need something to attack the healer. And 
every once in a while, for some reason, the slows do wear off as well. Now, this is this has not been a very clean assault, actually. Not very clean at all. But if I can take that healer down, I'm I will still be fine. I would need to get that healer down. Alright, so trying to send some harpies from here towards the healer. Trying to send a fire elemental to tank. Mm, yeah, not ideal. Healer is now healing itself. I can drop and execute, and now those harpies. No, there's an ogre mage. But the harpies were just fast enough to kill it. Okay, and the healer goes down, so from here. I don't think there's a chance to lose anymore. Even though my timings were a bit of a mess and everything was a little bit awkward. But now we're just completely fine. The boss is alone. I still have the mini boss that slows things down and we can just go in. We even get some bloodlust. Bloodlust with the execute and boom. Boss goes down. Even though I highly prefer Execute, especially when it's a Horde Wig, here I'm going to showcase how to do this also without Execute. So now I'm using Flame Burst Wellpex like a bomb, so I can drop that bomb on the troll and then also get the Grunts to fight against each other. So that goes on over there. On the other side there's a Stonehoof Torren just doing things to Ogre Mages alongside Plague Farmer and Troll providing support. So things are looking really nice here. That Stonehoof Torrent is just doing just look at that. It killed an ogre, it killed a mountaineer. It just it just does so much in this map. It's a it's a truly wonderful mini in this specific map. Because <laughs> everything the opponents have pretty much is vulnerable to Torrent. Torrent's just a perfect counter. But here we go, here we go. Torrent chilling. And we're trying to get some Welpex out there, while well, the Plague Farmer is supposed to poison things. Let's also drop an Earth Elemental out there so that we can we can take down the tower. Alright, tower is down. We have both towers, we have a Plague Farmer getting the first chip damage into the boss. And we can also get other units out there. Again, using the Welpex like a bomb. Boom. They explode, they kill the mini, and they even get to attack the boss afterwards. Yep, good good job with the well pegs, Plague Farmer. The range talent is doing so much work here, because when it has the range talent, then that means that the boss does not have the aggro range to actually attack it. And yeah, we keep dropping some bombs, we keep using the earth elemental as a tank, and there's very little that boss can do at this point. It's just dead. Then on to Imoltar, but I have no Fire Elemental and I have no Harpies. So what am I going to do? I am actually going to use a Plague Farmer, which is going to, with the talent, outrange Imoltar. This strategy does not work without the talent. You can use Harpies without talents, you can use Fire Elementals without talents. But for this one you do need the range talent on that Plague Farmer. And the key point here is that when I'm putting pressure on the right side, that means that the AI is much more likely to also put stuff on the right side instead of on the left side and then the plague farmer is just going to eventually kill the boss. That's the plan. That is the plan. I was actually able to take that tower and that was a little bit surprising because that is not something that I can very often do. But this time it worked. I was able to take the tower and here we go. As you can see the plague farmer keeps chipping at the boss. The boss is taking so much poison damage right now. Can you see can you see how the poison is sticking in? Tick 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 tick. It's just a lot of poison damage. So while I'm keeping the AI occupied on the right side, it ignores the left side, and then the boss goes down. A little bit gimmicky, it doesn't always work, but it's great when it does. And finally, King Kordok. Well, I would love Execute, Harpies, Quillbore, Fire Elemental. I would love all of those here. But now I'm doing it on Rit difficulty without any of those minis. Just to show that, yeah, we can even work with this. 
So here we're using the Sneed and we're using the Torin and the Plague Farmer. It's notable that there are no flying minis in this dungeon, so Plague Farmer can hit everything there is. Throwing in a bit of a troll out there as well. So we get a lot of pressure on the tower. I want to take the tower at the start. Boom, tower has been taken. And then I would need to get an attack on the lieutenant. On the lieutenant on the right specifically. But I just wanted to grab that. Grab that miner away. So that there's no miner right now. Okay, then I'm considering that maybe Plague Farmer, but actually. Plague Farmer, even with range, do you see that? The boss does notice it. So you actually have to distract this boss. This boss is no fool. Even with range, your Plague Farmer is noticed and you will have to use some distraction. Well, luckily I happen to have an Earth Elemental here, so even though I don't have a Quill Bore with me, an Earth Elemental is still a fairly, fairly good distractive unit, even though it does not have that resistance. So here we go. We get a little bit of an attack in at the Mountaineer. Then we drop the Earth Elemental out there. And now between the Earth Elemental, Stonehoof Torrent, and then the Troll and the Plague Farmer, this is going really well. If I had realized that the Plague Farmer actually does not outrange the boss, this would have been a little bit cleaner. But it was good that we got to showcase that, that hey, actually, actually that boss will fight against Plague Farmers too. But now we have Plague Farmer, Troll, Torren. We have a tank with the boss, so everything is looking extremely good. Obviously, I do want to get this tower back, so that I can send reinforcements through the middle. But that should be no problem with some Stonehoof Torren. Again, Stonehoof Torren facing Ogre Mage and facing Huntress, and oh boy, it's just beautiful. And I can send in some Earth Elementals to do some tanking as well. So Earth Elemental will help me tank, so that the add the mini boss is not in danger. The Earth Elemental are doing a spectacular job, getting some slowing in. Things are looking fairly good. I want to take that other mini boss. I would need to get through and start working my way towards the healer. Again, I'm dropping the Earth Elemental there to keep the mini boss safe and sound. Trying to mine a little bit, trying to get some assault going in. This time I do not have the execute. So I need to start dropping some unbound unbound minis on that healer. So that will get attention on the healer. And now we managed to get the Plague Farmer to target the healer. So now we should be totally fine. Plague Farmer is dealing damage to the healer. Healer is taking hits. Boss is taking hits. Boss is being slowed. Everything is looking beautiful now. Got the Welbex popped. Welbex are also dealing damage. And now the healer is down. And with no healer then the boss eventually will stand no chance. The boss was able to take back the lieutenants, but with no healing, then it's just a matter of time before the boss goes down. And that's Dungeon Dire Maul in three different ways with Horde Leaders all at red difficulty. Just enjoy. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.